Hey guys, and welcome to the second part of this exciting visual effects tutorial series. In the last part, I showed you how to create some very basic expressions in Adobe After Effects. And after Walter recovered from blowing up his computer, you have to give it to the guy, he went right back to it to try his hands at coding again. looks like a little bit less to clean up this time. In this tutorial, I want to introduce you to the concept of conditions, which will allow you to build some real smarts into your expressions. This is again going to be a basic tutorial, but I will assume that you have already watched part one of this tutorial series. But now, enough talking, let's write ourselves some code. Welcome again to the exciting world of Adobe After Effects. If you have watched the last part in this tutorial series, which I will very much assume that you did, you will notice that this is exactly where we left off. We have a basic one-line expression here that uses arithmetic operators, properties and functions to simply animate the source text property of a text layer. That is all well and good, but what if we wanted our expression to be a little bit more intelligent to, for example, only apply certain effects during certain times or if certain layers are in certain positions or if some other conditions are met. To implement this sort of logic in our expression, we can use conditional operators. Let's clear out this expression and in the expression editor simply type var seconds equals math with a capital M dot floor, open round bracket, time, close round bracket, and a semicolon and in the next line simply type seconds semicolon. So we're simply going to spit out the current seconds as the source text value. And now if you scrub through our composition you can see the text animate to show the current time in seconds. Actually let's disable the keyframes for the source text property because we will no longer need them for this tutorial and let's make the text a little bit bigger just so it's a little bit easier to see for you guys. Let's go into the expression editor and add a few blank lines in between our variable declaration and the final result. And now any condition is always going to be in the structure of if open round brackets and inside here you write your condition, then you open a curly bracket or braces and then you have the block of logic that gets executed if that condition is met and then a closing curly bracket. So we could change our condition to be if seconds equals to two and do note that I am using a double equal sign here because in JavaScript a single equal sign is for an assignment. So I'm assigning the value of math floor time to my seconds. Double equals is for comparison so that I'm comparing two to the contents of the seconds variable. So if the contents of the seconds variable is equals to two then execute what is in between these curly brackets. So in the body of this condition, let's for example change seconds to be a really evil number, 666. Let's go out. And now what is going to happen is that we're going to count 0, 1, 666, 3, 4. Because when seconds is value 2, we're actually going to overwrite it and set it to 666 and then output the final value. There is no limit to how many of these if blocks you could write. So for example, we could create another if block here that checks whether seconds is equals to three and then do something else. However, another structure that you can use in expressions or well in JavaScript in general is an if else. So for example, we could say if seconds is equals to two, assign 666. Otherwise, else open curly brackets and close curly brackets. And in here, if this condition is not met, if seconds is not equals to two, it will execute the else block. So it will execute the logic that sits in here. So for example, we could say seconds is equals to minus seconds. Let's click outside of the expression editor and let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see the full expression because this is getting a little bit longer. So now if we scrub through, we're going to see zero, minus one, six, 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 minus three, minus four, because the expression says that if my seconds is two, I'm going to output 666 
Otherwise, I'm going to invert seconds. So I'm going to count 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, etc. And that is what I'm going to assign to the source text property on my text layer. Right now, our logic is really simplistic and it just goes if some condition, do something, otherwise do something else. However, there's another construct that we can use to make this more complex, to add more conditions into it. For example, we could say if seconds is 2, assign 666. Now let's add some new lines in the middle and say else if, so otherwise, so if seconds is not 2, otherwise if seconds is 3, again, let's wrap this in curly brackets to delineate the block of code associated with this condition. And in here we can say seconds is equals to 333. Otherwise seconds is minus seconds, which is actually the same as saying minus one times seconds. It's just a simpler way of writing it. So just the negative of seconds. And now our condition is saying if seconds is two, seconds will get assigned 666. Otherwise, if our seconds is three, it'll be 333. Otherwise, if neither of these two conditions are met, then it'll just get set to the negative of itself. Let's click outside of the expression editor, go back. We're going to see zero minus one because seconds is not two and seconds is not three. Seconds is going to be set, set to the negative of itself, so to minus one. Then we're going to see 666. So this condition here is being hit. If seconds equals two, it gets set to 666. Then we're going to see 333 because now seconds is three. And if seconds is three, we're going to set it to 333. And then we just have minus four. Now it would be pretty limiting if the only conditional operator that you had available was equal. So you could only ever say if something equals to something, do something. So JavaScript and by extensions, expressions in After Effects have a whole lot of conditional operators that you can use to build some really intelligent logic into your expressions. Let's wipe out most of our expression and only leave our seconds variable declaration in place. And now let's type if seconds arrow to the left and this is a less than sign so this is a less than operator two so if our seconds is less than two then we're going to output less than two seconds otherwise so else we're going to output whatever the value is assigned to the current text let's click outside the expression editor and obviously our text has gotten a little bit too big again so let's shrink this down a little and if we now scrub through less than two seconds less than two seconds and now it's the value so while our seconds are less than two seconds, it's going to be set to less than two seconds. Otherwise, it's just going to be set to the actual value of the text. We can also change this around to be an arrow to the right, which means greater than. So let's change this appropriately to say more than two seconds. So now from zero up to three seconds, we're going to see the actual text assigned to our text layer. And then from three seconds onwards, which is indeed more than two seconds, our value is simply going to say more than two seconds. Let's come back into our expression and let's change this back to be seconds is less than two seconds. And inside our if else branches, we can make more if else branches. We can nest this as deep as we want to. I mean, as, as ugly as the code might get. So you want to be a little bit careful, but you can nest this even further. So in here, let's type if seconds exclamation mark equals three. And this means not equals three. Open curly bracket. Let's spell more than two, but not three and closing curly bracket. Finish that off with else, open curly bracket, value, close curly bracket. Uh, actually, well, logic-wise, this will really be more than one, but not three. So let's go out. So now if we scrub through from zero to two seconds, it will say less than two seconds because the first branch of our conditional logic is being hit. Seconds is less than two. So it will say less than two seconds. From two to three, it falls into this else branch and seconds in this case is two. So it'll go if seconds is not equals to three. Well, it isn't because right now it's two. It'll say more than one, but not three, which is correct as well. And then once we go into three seconds, it'll be seconds is not less than two. It's also not not equals to three. It is three. So it'll just spit out the value, which is can't sleep. Clown will eat me. And then towards the end, again, it'll go to more than one, but not three. So we could really use some intricate conditional logic to build some real smart into our expressions. Just a note though, to try to keep your conditions neat and clean, and this can actually be rewritten as else if seconds not equals three, which will then eliminate a few superfluous curly brackets and make your whole code look a little neater while still doing the exact same thing. And you can actually further optimize this. For one, whenever you have 
a logic block, like an if or an else logic block, and it only contains a single line of code, um, because obviously in this logic block you could write all sorts of smarts with all sorts of expressions and functions and whatnot. But if the block of code in curly brackets, the code that will be executed if the condition evaluates to true, only contains a single line of code, then you can actually leave out the curly brackets altogether. So we can actually get rid of all our curly brackets in our expression because each condition we have only contains a single line of code that will be executed. And that'll work exactly the same way. Finally, the last tip before I let you go is something that can just make your code look a lot more concise and to me personally is more readable but I know people have different opinions and it's called a ternary operator. If you have a simple if else block of logic like if some condition a then x else y, this can actually be rewritten using a ternary operator and what you can do is you can write condition a question mark x colon y and this literally says if this condition is met return this value so return x otherwise return this value and we can actually rewrite our entire expression using ternary operators and do hang on to your pants, it's a little bit more complicated because it does contain an else if, but we could essentially write seconds smaller two, so that's just our conditions, question mark, and now, well, if seconds is less than two, we want to return this here, we want to return less than two seconds, so it's going to be less than two seconds, colon, which means else, and because our else essentially has an if else as well, we need to have round brackets to group together another piece of logic and we're going to say seconds not equals three, question mark. That means seconds is greater than two, so we're falling into this else condition here and now we're saying if seconds is not equals to three, then we want to return this, colon, which is otherwise, return value. Semicolon at the end, let's delete our original expression click outside of the expression editor and what do you know it still does the exact same thing with a single line of code. Now it is important to note that the ternary operator essentially returns a value so we can actually assign that to a variable like var result equals to whatever that ternary expression mess is and then just output that as the property for our text value. Now I know that some people don't really like the ternary operator because they think it looks a little bit too cryptic Personally, however, I love using it. It keeps my code nice and concise and I don't blow out my page with lots and lots of if-else statements. But whether you do use the ternary operator or you just prefer the if-else structure, you can build some really strong smarts into your expressions just using the standard conditional operators available in Adobe After Effects. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed the second part in this tutorial series. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.